हेलो हेलो Welcome to the stream guys, we'll just get started in a couple minutes. All right, can you hear me guys? All right, so welcome everyone to the live session here. I hope everyone is in good health. So these are the couple of sessions I'm starting here just to share the knowledge with you guys. So we did one session on Monday where we talked about the basics of different things like network, network security, cloud computing, cloud security, data protection, data security. So uh, <clears throat> these were the basic items we covered there. And <clears throat> then now we are going to do a deep dive session on the other technologies like uh, networking, network security, and data protection, data security, cloud computing, cloud security, etc. So we'll just give another couple minutes, um, three more minutes for the folks who are late to join, and then we'll get started at three five seven five, right? And I believe the chat function is not working for some reason. So I have enabled the chat again. Try if the chat works. If it doesn't work for you, then please jump on to. Uh, you you can also open my go to meeting uh, link there. And that's also live. You can ask questions there. However, the chat session chat option will appear if you are connected. Uh, if you connected earlier, if you connect again by uh, refreshing your browser, that should bring your chat option. So, any questions, any suggestions, you can put in the chat. I'm looking at the chat right now on another device as well. If you are not comfortable with English, or if you want me to continue the session in Hindi, then please let me know. Uh, we'll try to have uh, 
another session in in hindi where i can teach you these uh, same thing in hindi but i'm choosing the language as english so um, it's a common language everyone can understand for that reason All right, so we have five folks joined here. Uh, we'll wait for another minute and then we'll get started. All right, so today we will talk about networking and network security. I'll start the session now. So let me talk about myself. So I'm working as a cloud security consultant with the Standard Chartered Bank as a senior manager. I have been working with different firms um, in the past. It's been more than eight years where I have been working with the security firms. Uh, I have worked on firewall, email security, um, cloud security, data loss prevention, all these technologies. So I have a very vast portfolio where I have come across many different kind of infrastructure, like a small medium business or the large business. So I'm just trying to share this knowledge with you guys if it helps you in any way. <clears throat> and today we will talk about network, uh, computer networks and network security. What is uh, computer networks? What is the network security, etc. And then I hope we will do a deep dive session starting from the next month uh, where we'll start from the network security which will also cover the basics of networking and the, then going forward once that session is completed we will start talking about the cloud security and advanced technology like, like uh, web proxies, firewalls, cloud DLP, etc. All right. So that's about me and that's about the course which we are going to do today. So this is not a certification course. This is, um, right now we are just going to talk about very basics of networking and network security for the folks who are new to this thing, who haven't explored any of the networking and network security. After this session, uh, everyone will have some basic understanding about these things and we will explore more on these topics later today. Um, if not today, then we will um, of course, we're doing deep dive session on network security. We'll try to start from the CCNA, which is Cisco Certified Network Associate level course, and then we will probably go into the details. All right. <coughs> so who's the target audience for today's um, session is any undergraduate students who are uh, pursuing their engineering, no matter which stream, they may be from IT, computer science, electronics, or mechanical, any student, or even a 12th pass student who is just exploring the world now. So anyone who's sitting at home, it's useful for them. And of course, the students who are freshers and preparing for the network interviews. So if you are going to prepare for an interview in a company, probably this session will help you and um, understand these things in a very basic language. A lot of time what happens, the interviewer, they don't uh, expect you to exp explain them the definitions and all. They want you to explain them in a very basic manner, like how do you explain it to a five-year-old kid? 
and that's how we are going to start the session today <clears throat> and if you follow the same approach in your interviews it will help you out in cracking your interviews as well so this course can also be considered as a prerequisites for Cisco certified network associate uh, so if you are going to attempt that exam or thinking of taking that certification or going through that course uh, this course might help you out in setting up the basics knowing about the networking is it a good choice or a bad choice you can make your decision after watching this video and of course it's going to help the IT professionals who are into security domain it will help them with the very basic things about what is a network what are the firewalls what different kind of firewalls how do you implement changes etc and anyone who is not into core security for them it will be a good starter to understand things from the scratch so uh, guys as I said in my email that uh, the live stream may have some problems so click on the bell icon click um, and subscribe to the channel so that way you get notification if uh, if this stream ends and another one starts or for future uh, courses as well I'm also uh, emailing you guys a form link please fill that form if you haven't done that yet and I'll also put uh, post that link in the video description later this after this course so you can fill that form and that way I get your email address and I'll be sending you the email notification whenever I'm planning a new, new session <coughs> okay so let's start um, computer networks so what we will explore is what is com what is a network what is IP address and subnet mask what are different types of network what do we mean by protocols what are the type of protocols used for data transmission from one machine to another when we talk about machine or computers it's not just one machine we can be talking about mobile phones laptops cell phones at anything so it, it's a different kind of devices we will be using working principle of networking uh, depends on two two type of layered architecture models one is OSI and one is TCP IP model we will talk about OSI model in this course and TCP IP model we can talk or we will try to talk in, in our deep dive sessions on the networking but basically both are almost similar there is a just few layers are coupled in in TCP IP when we compare it with OSI but rest everything looks similar okay so on the right side you have a diagram which basically shows what a computer network look like so in our home consider that the, the middle the, the thing in the middle that's a router okay or a, and it can also be firewall or two different devices a router and a firewall or just a router okay then our mobile phones or laptop or computers or our TVs um, like our smart TV or a smart washing machine everything is connected to this router now so <coughs> this this forms a network and every device is assigned an IP address okay so IP addresses are nothing but uh, just an identification for that computer like we all have a first name and last name that's how we are recognized so similarly an IP address is assigned to each and every machine so others um, machines on the same network know like which machine is who okay? and then of course every machine has a host name and then again there's a unique identifier which is the hardware address which is called MAC address assigned to each and every device so basically when you are in the local network the communication happens on the hardware level uh, the ethernet address the mac address and when you talk to an, a server which is outside your network like google.com there the communication happens on the network layer the ip layer there they talk uh, talk with the in, in terms of ip address so the packet goes to an ip instead of a mac uh, mac so yeah that's about the basics of these things now now let's start about talking about the local area network what is a local area network and what what is an IP address so as I explained you earlier what happens basically now if you look at our traditional um, infrastructure or the broadband network in our homes there is a connection internet connection which comes from the ISP which is called internet service provider that's an RJ45 connector that connects to your modem or the router okay earlier what happened what used to happen there used to be a separate device called modem that used to transfer that used to translate the signal into a different form and then the wireless router used to pick uh, the network and uh, that used to work but now modems are no more uh, required the routers do all the job so the connection directly connects to your router 
and then all your other devices printers handheld devices like your mobile phones laptops computers washing machine fridge everything connects to this router right so when you are in a, in your own home or this can also be applied to a company so where you see a modem instead of that modem if we put a firewall that becomes your corporate network so every machine within your local network has a local ip address okay so there are two type of ip addresses one is public ip one is private ip so the public ips are assigned to the machines which are exposed to the internet private ips are assigned to the machines which are not exposed to the internet which are local okay and of course the router has a public ip address and a private ip address so anytime it needs to communicate within internal machines it uses a private ip address and anytime your machine needs to connect to an internet server it uses the public ip address to connect to the external server okay we will talk about that later in, in our upcoming slides and every machine is also assigned a subnet mask so subnet mask typically look like 255.255.255.0 that's a typically a subnet mask okay so for a machine all the machines to be in the same network they all need to have the same subnet mask okay every machine in my network should be having 255.255.255.0 .255 i'll show that to you and there are four classes of the ip addresses class a b c d so a couple of uh, ip classes are reserved for the um, local network and others are can be used on the internet as well so we will explore those things in our deep dive sessions when we do it later so stay subscribed we will be doing we will be talking about a lot of things so let me uh, show you about the ip addresses which we are talking about so you can do do the same thing on your computer go to network and sharing center click on the connection wireless network connection okay this brings your ipv4 or ipv6 properties okay <coughs> so right now i have a ipv4 connection so click on properties here this is a long way to find this out there's another shorter way we'll talk about both so this is it says op obtain an ip address automatically obtain dns server automatically so these two things are assigned by your router so you don't need to manually put in an ip address here like this okay your router knows how what ip to be assigned to each machine so there is no conflict so two machines don't have the same ip address that's why so i'll change it to obtain an ip address automatically okay and i'll cancel this now i'll show you the actual ip address of this machine okay so now you can see this is my ip address 192.168.0.8 this is my subnet mask 255.255.255.0 this is my gateway 192.168.0.1 and then my DNS server is same as my router, okay? And then um, my router knows where to forward these requests. Okay, let me show you my public IP address. By the way, the public IP addresses are very confidential. If somebody knows your public IP address, they can attack on your network. So you can see my public IP address is different, 49.207, and my private IP address is different. So the public IP address, this address is belongs to my router, which is the internet-facing gateway. All right. So let's go back to the presentation here. So that's about the local area network. Now let's talk about how these machines talk. What are the standards to set up a local area network? There's something called OSI model. Uh, this is an organization which has uh, come up with this OSI model way back in past, all right? And we all have been using all the devices that are there to this model for the transmission of the data. So I have given us a link on the right side, and that's where you can go and learn more about uh, these layers. For now, I'll explain this to you, and I'll also share. I'll also be sharing this uh, PPT with you guys after the session, so then you can. Actually, click on the links in your local computer itself and use this PPT for your own study purpose or reference. All right. So typically in OSI model, there are seven layers. These are the seven layers. They start from physical link, data link, network, transport, session, presentation, application. All right. So each and every application has a different um, purpose. They all have different tasks assigned to them. So it, it actually tells how the data flows in which direction from a sender and from a recipient perspective. 
we'll talk about that in the next slide so first three slide on top these are called software layers these are not dependent on hardware or network these are just the software based layers okay so application layer generally contains your browser presentation is just presenting the data into uh, into different formats and then session is connecting one machine to another transport is transporting that data to another computer right so and then so and so forth like network talks about the ip address data link talks about uh, checksum and another physical and uh, other data uh, type of data conversion and then physical layer talks about your nic cards your uh, physical connection ethernet cable etc right <coughs> so this is how typically a data transfer happens so there are two people on the left side there is a sender on the right side there is a receiver so on the sender side the data originates on the application layer okay and then it goes below to a physical layer and then on the receiving side the data is uh, decapsulated and goes to the upper layers so each and every layer on the recipient si on the sender side uh, like first it start from application presentation session each and every layer encapsulates the data <coughs> okay and then transfer the data to the next layer so let's take an example of of uh, browsing internet okay so you went to a browser you type www.youtube.com all right so that's an application your browser is actually an application you type the address there and this particular work where you type the address or you are clicking here and there that's all happening on the application layer now this data whatever you are typing there that needs to be transferred to the server so this data goes to the presentation layer from the human readable language www.google.com or youtube.com it gets translated into a machine readable language like 0101 the binary format and then this data gets sent to the next layer which is called session layer so session layer what it does it creates a session between two machines so it it has a session between your computer and the other computer the receiver okay so like in uh, if you browse a session you might be you, if you browse a website you might be seeing a notification that we use cookies and sessions so this is to identify each and every unique session a server has with the user so it knows who is this user what he browsed in past and what should i be giving him suggestions so a classic example of sessions is uh, and the cookies is like uh, you go to youtube you watch certain kind of videos and then the next time when you open youtube you see similar category of videos appearing in your feed you if you are searching for educational content next time it shows you only educational content right so that all track based on the session and cookies so after that the data uh, gets encapsulated and the data is trans uh, the transport layer comes in picture so now the data first was created on application layer it was converted into binary format then there was a session which was created between two machines now this data needs to be transported between two machines so that's where the transport layer comes in picture there are two protocols used typically used on the transport layer tcp and udp okay so tcp is <coughs> connection oriented udp is connection less all right so um, we will talk about that uh, later so the data based on the protocol based on uh, the type of connection you have so um, for a web session it's it's typically tcp so the data on the transport layer gets transferred from one machine to another okay the network layer is responsible for uh, creating a uh, assigning the ip address to both the sender and the recipient so they both know so for example the uh, the public ip address of the of the sender is 1.1.1.1 and the recipient is 2.2.2.2 so here there will be an ip packet which goes from the user one uh, the sender to recipient which is like from is 1111 recipient is 2222 okay next is data link layer this link uh, this layer actually converts uh, the the data for further so let's say your uh, data was tip earlier in binary format but uh, the binary data only resides in the computer when you have to transfer this over to a wire or wireless network this data has to be converted into something else right so typically an electronic wave so you might be might have seen those sine waves in your um, engineering days uh, where uh, uh, or you see that on the machines which detect the patient's heartbeat right so the graph goes up and down up and down so these are basically electronic uh, uh, electric pulses where the high pulse represents one and the low pulse represents zero 
right so the data is actually converted into pulses here on data link layer and then further transferred to the physical layer to transfer this to another machine right and then also the checksum happens on this layer it checks if there is any error in the data if there was an error it discards the data <coughs> all right and then it, it transferred it transfers it further all right and on the physical layer the your physical uh, connections like your ethernet cables your ip addresses um, your ethernet cables the wi-fi networks modem router switches these things come in picture on the physical layer so this is about this is about the layers so on the uh, this is from the sender perspective on the recipient recipient perspective the the flow actually reverses here so data is first received on the physical layer then data link layer decapsulates it does the checksum and does also convert the electric electric pulse to the binary format then it looks at who is the recipient what's the recipient ip address 2.2.2 .2 so it sends the tcp packet to that particular ip address on the transport layer then it looks for the session it creates a session between the sender and recipient then it sends the data to presentation layer presentation layer converts this data into human readable language and then it goes to application layer and that's where the user can read it i hope that's clear okay so how two computers talk to each other on a LAN network this is what we will talk about now so there are two machines one is host a and then the host b typically your laptops represent like a hyphen pc b hyphen pc so for my laptop it will be elias hyphen pc for your laptop it might be something else and then each machine has an ip address like one the first machine on my network has 192.168.170.1 um, and the, the other machine on my network has 192.168.170.2. All right. And then both have the same subnet mask, right? So that's how it represents they both are on the same network. So uh, now let's see what happens when you transfer the data from one computer to another. First, the machine looks for uh, who is forget uh, just one second it's tcp connection okay So first the machine looks for who who is uh, 192.168.172.0.170.2 this should be 2 okay so the machine a ask who is 192.168.170.2 that's called an arp packet so you're using an arp packet the machine discovers the actual uh, host who is the recipient of the data then all the machines on the network receive this packet this is a broadcast packet so every machine on the network say if there are thousands of devices they all receive this uh, packet so whoever is 192.168.170.2 only that machine will respond here okay so in this case we'll see the machine b responded i am 192.168.170.2 this is an arp packet so now both machines know what is the ip address of each machine right because the first machine got the response from the b that i am 192.168.170.2 and since in the initial request uh, which the host a sent it has the ip address of its own already in there right so they would not both know who is who now their tcp handshake happens since the NAC act after that they start transferring the data so it's with every data transmission there comes an acknowledgement from the recipient once all the data transfer is completed the connection is terminated so the, to, to terminate the connection the sender sends a fin packet and the recipient acknowledges that with egg packet and then the host b will send a fin packet and host a will respond with the egg packet that's how a communication takes place 
okay then next comes wide area network the wide area network is almost like a private network but it's connected to an internet all right and when you connect it to internet that that's when it becomes uh, when so when it actually represents the external link the isp connection coming to your network so anything outside your router is uh, or your or your firewall is a wan link so when you connect uh, your network your router or your mobile phone to an internet that is talking to a wan machine um, uh, wan connection for google.com or other type of connections as uh, i said earlier every router or every firewall which is internet facing has two type of interface one private interface and one public interface so the private interface has the private ip address and the public interface has the public ip address okay so looks like sahil has a question on fin okay so here um, it is for you uh, sahil so fin is fin, fin represents final so it's a final packet which gets transferred from the first ho from any host it says that okay the tra data transfer is completed i am going to close this session now okay and then the other party responds that okay you, you can close the session so this one way session gets closed and then the other party also sends a fin packet a final packet that okay i am going to close the session from my as well my side as well if you send anything now i won't receive it okay then the other party as well receives uh, sends the acknowledgement of the egg packet that these are the four packets where the connection actually closes i hope that answers uh, your question if it's, if you still need more details please ping on the chat okay so wide area network i we already talked about so when you have one network here and another network here so these are the two these two type of diagrams here they represent two different kind of networks one is your network and one is another somebody else network on the internet so when you let's say you are watching my youtube video right now right so what's happening you have your own network i have my own network we both are connected to internet and then we have both have our routers or directly our mobile phones connected to internet so whichever device is sitting at the edge the edge means the internet right that will have the public ip address and whichever device is behind a router or a firewall they all will have private private ip address there are two reasons to have just the pub private ip addresses for the local machines one we don't have enough public ip address ranges so this saves us a lot of public ip address requirements okay second we don't expose our private machines to internet if we have just private ip address on these machines so whenever somebody has to go out only the address of the router gets exposed to the internet that's another security thing here okay so for the public to private translation there comes the network address translation this is called nat there are multiple type of uh, network address translation static and dynamic we will only talk about static here to keep uh, it relevant so as you can see the client 172.16.0.5 okay that's a private ip address of one of the local machine then you have your router so the router has two inter interface fas fast is interface 00 and then the second interface 01 so 00 is your private interface 01 is your public interface okay and then we have a server on the internet which is 10.0.0.100 so what happens when this client wants to talk to the web server he initiates the the connection and and the source uh, and and the packet which goes to internet look will look like something once where source is 172 so uh, uh, is my audio okay i'm getting some feedback that the audio is too low can you guys just uh, comment on the chat okay so the source ip address of that packet will be 172.16.0.5 and the destination will be 10.0.0.100 okay and <clears throat> when this packet goes to the router the router will have 
we'll we'll trans uh, trans this uh, packet to something else and send to the internet the web server. So now the source will become 10.16.0.5, which is which is the public IP address of the router, and then the destination is the web server's public IP address. Okay, so this is how two machines talk to each other on the internet. So first, um, let's say you want to access the web browser google.com. So first, uh, what happens, your machine wants to know who is google.com. You do a DNS query and ask the DNS server that tell me the IP address of www.google.com. Then the DNS server, usually it's 8.8.8.8. .8 .8 .8 .8 .8 if it's a public DNS or your router or local DNS server. It responds with an IP address, the public IP address of that server 1.1.1.1. So it says that the google.com is 1.1.1.1. You can send your request to this address. Okay, so now it knows who to send the packets. So you have the, the third uh, line, the Third vertical line represents Google IP address. Okay, the middle one represents the router, and the first one represents the host name. So what happens first is uh, there will be a, uh, a TCP handshake will happen. Okay, and after that the data transfer will happen as usual. So first a SYN packet will go to the router, and router will look who is the recipient. So router will see the recipient is 1.1.1. It will do the network address translation. Now the source will become 2.2.2, the router's public interface, and the data will be transferred to Google or to 1.1.1. Now Google will acknowledge the SYN packet, the synchronization packet, and will respond with SYN AG packet. That's the second packet. And now the host A will again send the packet AG and so it, it's again sending an acknowledgement to the uh, google.com that okay i got your synac packet now the connection is established and the data gets transferred to the google.com so this data is typically whatever you type to search something on google.com right so every data you send to google it responds with an acknowledgement the data transfer can be two way some a um, lot of time your the web servers will also be responding with some data to the client right like a web page etc so there in that case, the uh, the client will also res respond with an acknowledgement. So let's consider the one-way tra uh, transaction here. So after all the transactions are completed, the data is received on both ends. Again, the session closes in the end. So the fin packet, which is called final final packet in the TCP, that gets sent to the uh, Google.com, and Google.com responds with an acknowledgement. Okay, that I'm I got your connection close request. You can close the connection. Then Google will say, can I close the connection from my end and will send the final packet, the fin packet, and then the client will respond with an acknowledgement. So that's about the trans uh, transaction, the data transfer or communication between two machines on the internet. The next topic is types of firewall. So there are five types of firewall. <coughs> packet filtering firewall, circuit level gateway, stateful inspection firewall, application level gateway, also known as proxy firewall, and the next generation firewall. So these are, these are the five types of firewall. We'll talk about these uh, firewalls in detail, what each and every type of firewall does, how it inspects the network in, uh, in detail in our network security classes. Uh, since we have limited time today, so we won't be covering these in detail today. Okay. Now, next is what kind of threats a firewall block. So, let let me talk. Go back to previous screen. So, what is a firewall first? So, a firewall is a network device which which is the last resort on your network. So, before the when when the connection comes from the ISP, it connects to your firewall and then it goes to your router and then it goes to your machine, right? So, when you send something out, it goes to router and then it goes to firewall, then it goes to internet. So, if someone someone is trying to attack on your network it hits the firewall first and then your firewall can protect it. So think of this, if a hacker is trying to hack your network, if you don't have a firewall, he will directly hit your router. If you don't have a router, it will directly hit your device, right? 
So firewall is a necessary measure to protect your machines or Windows machines or the Linux machine. They have inbuilt firewalls and that's a software firewall, but the corporate network cannot rely just on the software firewall. They have a hard dedicated hardware or a, a, or a proxy solution, a cloud based solution where the connection hits there first and then it gets routed to the internet uh, to the local servers if somebody is accessing the network. So um, basically firewalls are required to protect. So basically firewalls are try to uh, are required to protect uh, the, the attacks um, which can happen on your corporate network. Just a second, let me respond to the comments. Okay. So type of threats that firewall block. These are some of the threats which a firewall can block. So um, our modern firewall can do a lot more than this. These are just a couple of the examples. Okay, so spam. Um, the modern firewall, they also have the anti-spam capability where it can also look at the emails. So somebody is sending an spam email to you. Like if you look at your Gmail mailboxes, they are full of spam. But when we look at our corporate emails, the, we don't have much spam there. So this is these are, this is a protection provided by the firewalls or the email security gateways. Then ransomware. Sometime you might have seen that your uh, um, the files on your local system they go get encrypted with something else, right? And the file extension is changed, and then the and and the, then the tool demands for for some ransom, like uh, transfer us hundred dollars uh, or hundred million dollars, and then we will help you decrypt your, your data. So it protects against that. Then malware. Malware is again something. Uh, similar which where it just uh, it, it's sort of a, um, a, a unwanted software which sits on your, on your machine these are not typically a virus or something but uh, they try they also steal your information then comes phishing attacks so phishing is again related to emails identity theft somebody is trying to impersonate you and can uh, try to access a resource on the internet uh, that basically happens through MITM attack, man in the middle attack. So for that as well, your firewall protects. Then DOS and DDoS attacks, malicious crypto miners, Trojan horse, sin flood, botnet, port scanning. If we talk about each and every item very detail here, it will be out of scope. So we'll cover these items later when we talk about network security. Okay, so other interesting technologies you should know about are these five where we might have used these terminologies during our class. So you should go and Google about it. Email security. This is an email security technology which actually filters the emails which is coming to your corporate network. So if you are sitting to, if you are working for a company called abc.com and you will have an email address abc, uh, user1 at abc.com. So any email coming to that email address will first go through email security appliance, will be filtered there and then it will be sent to your internal network. So anti-spam is also part of email security devices. SSL VPN. SSL VPN uh, helps you connect to your corporate resources when you are working from home or from any outside network location. So right, right now we all are sitting at our homes and doing work from home. So SSL VPNs are enabling us to connect to our corporate network and access the, um, the internal resources like our private servers or a HR system uh, over chat clients etc then other technologies which uh, we talked about were routers switches modems and hubs so hubs and modems are very old technology they are not used anymore current one is router and switches but it's worth knowing all of them nick card nick card is uh, every machine has an internet uh, interface and the network interface card and IC card, these are the physical cards on your machines, on your laptops, where you plug in your ethernet cable or your Wi-Fi uh, hardware. So NIC card has, every NIC card has a unique identifier, which is called as MAC address. Okay, I got a question from Umesh Nand. So we'll uh, just, We'll, we'll answer all the questions at the end of the session. I'll keep track of the questions which are being which are coming up in the chat. So yeah, guys, post your questions in the chat, and I'll try try to answer the those questions in the end. Okay, so uh, 
we just have 15 more minutes now uh, why uh, why firewalls and what what if uh, if i have a firewall am i secure enough so the uh, the answer is no even if you have a firewall or the top notch security devices in your network you cannot be secure until unless it's configured properly so a lot of most of the attacks um, and most of the big breaches they have uh, happened in the net in, in the companies where the companies lost millions of data because the firewalls or other network security devices or other data protection devices were not configured these are the human errors which we should try to avoid so if you want to take away something from this uh, session at least uh, make sure uh, just that you don't you try to reduce the human error as much as possible and we'll talk about how can you do that in future okay so whenever a misconfiguration happens due to an administrator so typically in a a, a problem uh, a misconfiguration an admin does is they op they left they leave the ports open from the internet to your local network okay um let me just go back here let me explain how firewall actually protects that will help okay so in this example you can see uh, this box is firewall here right and this is internet now there is a hacker sitting here on the other network which just appeared on top right this network is let's say it belongs to a hacker what it does it if it wants to hack let's say this printer here right it wants to just randomly print some memes or something right what it does it tries to first identify the ip address right and then send a print request to this machine so consider you don't have a firewall then what will happen the connection will come from the hacker will hit here to the internet from internet to you the router directly right and then the router doesn't know why whether this request should be allowed or blocked because routers they just know that the traffic needs to be routed to the proper destination right and it sends the traffic to the printer and then some bogus information is printed on the printer right to protect this information what happens if you put a firewall in place the attacker will come to the internet in turn from internet the connection will hit your firewall instead of your router directly right and then on firewall we create uh, some rules um, like uh, by default every firewall has an explicit um, um, uh, deny rule so it says everything should be blocked from outside to the internet connection okay when some someone is coming from internet to your private network everything should be blocked but only these few connections should be allowed so then you create whitelisted network so if this is your another uh, if you have another private network which connects to your net your corporate network right you create uh, another um, rule here saying uh, that if connection is coming from the uh, ip address 1.1.1.1 right and um, destination is my printer then allow this but if anything else is connecting to my printer block it so that's how typically you have firewall rules to protect your network. So in similarly, if if an attacker is trying to uh, install some crypto locker on one of the laptops here on your network, it again has to go through your firewall and then hit the router and then go to laptop. But the firewall knows firewall has um, um, the 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 packet level firewalls, right? The application firewalls, the packet and application firewalls. These are the two firewalls which. Um, uh, or the latest proxies or any latest firewalls they have implicit uh, rules to identify what kind of connection it is what kind of file is being downloaded right so let's say a user went to a site and where um, a crypto locker was uh, downloaded by mistake and it was transferring to the user machine so the firewall sees what kind of data is being downloaded and it blocks the connection it doesn't let you download that file so that's how a firewall typically helps in securing your network Okay, so I hope uh, the question is clear now how the firewall protects your network. If you want to talk more about firewall, then probably we can have uh, another session tomorrow or day after tomorrow where we will only talk about firewall in detail. Okay, so I have two more questions. Uh, one question is from Sahil Bhatia. Which type of firewall is used commonly for network and software security? 
one question from Sarfraz is which firewall is used for email security is it common firewall or configured on network okay and then Sahil Bhatia asks can you repeat the types of firewall yes so these are the type of firewall uh, you have here packet filtering firewall circuit level gateway stateful inspection application level gateway next gen firewall so now uh, the four the number four and fifth are the are the latest technology okay the uh, firewall and the pro the proxy firewalls or application firewall and then the next generation firewalls these are being used but somewhere uh, these uh, these applic these firewalls they have this packet filtering circuit level gateway and stateful inspection embedded within themselves so if you want to learn more you should be learning more about application level gateway and next generation firewalls these are the firewalls will be interested for interesting for you and <coughs> the other three were previous old technologies which are still being used so some pack some protection needs to happen on packet level some protection needs to happen on application layer some packet uh, some protection needs to happen on the connection level so uh, depending on all these things different modules come in picture and that's how a strong firewall uh, utilizes all five of these technologies and pro provides you protection so in modern days right now we use proxy and next generation firewalls this is the question uh, this is the answer to sahil's question and for the self raj question uh, which firewall is used for email security is it common firewall no not all the firewalls have email security option um, only some of the firewalls provide email security options and that too only for the local email servers so now since office 65 and hosted emails uh, solutions are there uh, for that you need hosted email security or the cloud email security or cloud access security brokers to protect your emails hosted in the net in the cloud but if you still if your company is still using on-prem exchange servers or lotus node server then the email security comes in picture so there the email security devices um, it's a separate device you can purchase and you can install on your network or there are firewalls which have a module of in email security within themselves and which can do the job so the modern firewall the next generation firewalls and the application layer layer firewalls the uh, proxy firewalls they both help with the email security right now so Sahil uh, I hope uh, the other question can you repeat the types of firewall that's answered as well anyways I'll share the PPT so that will be helpful for you so and Umesh earlier asked how firewall works to block threats. I hope Umesh my answer helped you out in un understand that particular question. Okay, coming back to misconfigurations done by the humans. So three major outcomes of the misconfiguration. One is compliance violence wi violation. So every every country has some compliance and regulatory requirements. Okay, you have to adhere to those requirements. So like Europe has its own regulatory compliances, US has its own regulatory compliances, right? So if any breach happens and something or if customer's data is leaked, then you are um, um, you, you are violating those compliances and you will be fined for it. You have to pay in millions or billions if, if, you, if it's a firm. If it's your private data, nobody cares what was violated, but if it's somebody else data, then of course there can be consequences. So of course, um, then compliance is one thing, and after the compliance violation, the um, uh, the fines come in picture. So avenues for breaches. Now the second thing is like this again makes a hotspot for the hackers to come and uh, execute uh, their malicious actions. So what happens? Let's say a port is open, an RDP uh, remote connection is open to one of your server where anyone can connect and send emails out. Now, if spammers have to spam somebody, they can use your exchange server to send spams out. And who will be blacklisted? It will be you. So that's another type of uh, problem we may face. Unplanned outage. If somebody is doing too many uh, requests, too many SYN requests are coming, too many data requests are coming, which is hitting your firewall, that may bring your network down, right? And you may face unplanned outage. These are three major outcomes of misconfiguration. Then common misconfiguration which we do we uh, generally do a uh, five type of misconfiguration one is overly permissive access you just give 
unrequired access to anyone so by default there is a block everything rule right for example you may delete it by mistake and then everyone has all kind of access right and or let's let's assume that you have a web server in your network right and that web server needs to be accessed from the internet so on what port the request should be hitting it's generally the port 80 or port 443 which is used for the internet these are the two ports you should be opening from the internet anyone coming from the internet should only be hitting to these two ports but what if you just open all the ports for the internet you open port 3389 for rdp which is for the remote connections right then that's called excessive permission you are giving the permission more than what is required incorrect access so somebody need you you can you, you can have multiple subnets in in your network one called let's say dmz your local area network lan right and <coughs> you can have local area network 2 so the user who was supposed to have access only to local area network one, you also gave them access to local area two. So that may uh, result into more problems again. Open ports to non-vulnerable ports host, right? So this one we already talked about. So non-vulnerable host means, let's say a firewall, uh, uh, a Windows server is prone for um, remote desktop connections, right? And you need to keep that open. You can't close the remote desktop connections. You keep that open but you allowed access to that port from internet now people will try to access that um, particular server try to hack into that server so they can get the remote session uh, that's that's the classic problem if they succeed in in finding out the credentials they may get into your server as well next one rule that bypass the proxy yeah of course um, so the egress policy and ingress egress means going out okay ingress means coming in so we'll talk about this in in our firewall uh, discussions this will this is a long topic we don't want to talk about it now but if you have any questions please ping me that i'll try to answer that over email or something access that violates internal and regulatory compliance standards okay i think i can just skip rest of it now uh, you can just review this slide offline okay what should you do to minimize the misconfigurations so to minimize the misconfigurations companies come up with change request management okay usually there is a change request management portal where you go and submit your request that okay on the firewall we want to change this right for example you want to uh, open a port so you say that i want to open a port to this server on this day and i need this much time to do it so you create you follow a change request management and then typically they are at process at um, task you do in that so you first create a change request then you plan for the change like how much human resource you need how much time you need to make that change do you need additional hardware or new plugins to be installed you mention all those details right and then somebody uh, <clears throat> understands the risk somebody looks at the risk identifies what, whether it's a risk or not if it's uh, and then somebody defines what is the time window required for this implementation again and then they say uh, they approve the change request based on that so once let's say once the change request is approved generally the change request is approved by the department heads and this goes back uh, goes up to the uh, highest level as CISO chief information security officer so once this is approved, you deploy the changes uh, uh, in that particular window. So let's say the window was provided to you to make the change on Sunday. So you make the change on Sunday at 6 p.m. if that's the window. And then once the changes are done, you validate the change that whether it's working fine, are there any problems? Did you give access, uh, access to the required people or did you give uh, um, more, more, uh, more access than what is required? You do all those validation. Right. If everything is fine, you close the request. If you see there's something wrong, then you roll back the changes you did. And you mention that th th something went wrong and we will try to attempt this change later. And you close the request. Okay, so um, that's about the network and network security. Guys, it's time for the questions. If you have any further questions, please type that into the chat. I'll try to answer those now.
okay so now what you should uh, take back from this class are three things why do you need a router you should know about it if you do, still don't know please uh, ping on the chat or drop me an email i'll explain this to you or you can google about it and why do i need a firewall that's another tag back and the third one is how does a firewall work so yes we need firewalls if you are in your home network if you are not in a corporate network you don't have a firewall it's mandatory to turn your turn on your firewall if you turn it off to let some um, um, those uh, if you are trying to crack some softwares right this is all the habit of ours we download some software from internet and we crack it and those software ask us to keep our firewalls and antivirus off don't do that keep your firewall on and keep your antivirus on this may allow uh, the hacker to use your machine as a botnet or a ddos uh, source so we'll talk about botnet and ddos later but for now uh, you can go to google and type botnet and how it works so typically what hack what happens hackers install uh, these malicious software on your machine which you don't even know and these run in the background if your system firewall is off these botnets uh, are used to attack uh, to do the denial of service attacks to somebody else now uh, denial of service is something where you send too many requests to a server so for example if i have a server elias.com will be sending too many connection requests to my server that my server goes out of uh, out of resource and it dies right so these botnets become part of it so yes sahil it's important for you to turn on your firewall turn it on now don't turn it off even if you are using some cracked software uninstall them and find some genuine software okay uh, umesh is asking a quick explanation of ip types of ip and ip distributions uh, umesh uh, this discussion we can have offline and but here we give a very basic detail in this particular slide um, that there are four classes of ip addresses class a b c and d okay now uh, if you just google the classes of ip address you will get more detail this is actually a co uh, a chapter in the ccna class which i was planning to cover in our network sec network security classes so you can just google it out it's very basic here so i'll paste the link in the youtube chat So these are the four, uh, five classes of IPv4. Please note these are not the IPv6 classes. IP, the class A starts from 1.0.0.1 to 1.26255255254. Okay, the next one is IPv6. Okay, so these are the five classes of IPv4. Please note these are not the IPv6 classes. IPv6 starts from 1.0.0.1 to 1.26255255254. Okay, the next one is IPv6. Okay, so these are the five classes of IPv4. Please note these are not the IPv6 classes. IPv6 starts from 1.0.0.1 to this range. Okay, the range are in front of you. I don't want to just repeat them. So you can uh, now how many hosts there the binary uh, calculations come in picture and that's a long uh, topic so we should be covering that into multiple classes so basically what happens each bit is transferred into binary 0 1 format and then based on that these numbers come up then and multicast broadcast this is another thing uh, it will be out of scope to discuss today okay so now i just have one puzzle for you try to solve this puzzle and we will i'll give you the answer in our next session so cipher cipher uh, is basically uh, converting a normal text into something uh, different which is not readable right so for example if i have to type my name elias that you everyone can read but what if i replace every uh, every uh, letter in my name with uh, some random letters right then you won't be able to read so that's what i have done done here this is some random numbers this is cipher suite uh, cipher and you have you can convert this easily into the plain text okay uh, a hint for you just try copy and paste this into your notepad and you'll get the answer this is just uh, i very basic
all right so that's all from my end if you have any questions please ping on chat i leave the chat open for a while and for another 15 minutes and i'll stop the stream now thank you guys for your time today